Hey guys, welcome back to Legit Streetcars and welcome to C63 Engine Madness Part 2. In the first video, we removed the 56,000 mile but locked up dual overhead cam V8 from my 2009 C63 AMG. We took it apart to reveal lots of little tiny issues that added up to a few gigantic issues. And if you guys have not seen that video, I will definitely leave it linked down below. You're not going to want to miss the carnage that we discovered with, with this. But hopefully in this video, we're moving past all of that. Now I say hopefully because we're installing another used engine. This one has 57,000 miles. It costs $7,500. I have not seen this engine run, but it is guaranteed for 90 days. I actually got it from my friends at GM Outlet who usually provide LS swap engines and other parts, but they found a good deal on this. We could have gone with like a 100,000 mile engine for about $4,000, but I wanted the used engine's mileage to match the car because it's just too nice of a car to stick a really high mileage probably soon to break engine but we have to take this one apart make sure it's in great condition and then we are going to be doing a few modifications and upgrades included some upgraded black series tappets and the upgraded head bolts so after we put the heads back on we're installing these awesome long tube headers from victory road performance look at the primaries here they also sent out 630 cc fuel injectors some billet engine mounts a new intake and the guys at modern masters just make this look so easy find c63 fix give it away that, that's that's all i have to do all right so right now we are swapping over the flex plate from the c63 engine because our new engine did not include one and Rusty, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling much more rested than I was yesterday. Before we put the new engine on the stand, we are gonna install the flex plate, but I just wanted to show you that a lot of these engine recyclers will put these little guys here over the freeze plugs so that if it's overheated, this will pop out and it says void if removed. So that way, when they give you that guarantee, they know you didn't overheat it. Uh, now, something I wanna point out is that the M156 engine can leak oil from a lot of different places, but I do believe this one has been resealed again. Uh, you can see a lot of this black glue doesn't really look factory and there are no leaks whatsoever. So this is a bed plate, so it can leak from this ceiling point and this ceiling point, and it is bone dry. And then it has two lower oil pans, one right here, and one right there. And if we move back here, I think the rear main seal has also been done because there is absolutely nothing. So luckily we're all good there and we don't have to take apart the entire bottom end. Okay, so there's a few plates that we need to install. That one goes on first, then our flex plate. And then we have one on the outside like so, and then you can start installing your bolts. All right, so first up we have 30 Newton meters, so we don't have to hold the crank for that or anything. Just wanna go in a star pattern as well. All right, so right now we're doing a 90 degree angle torque. So I'm holding the crank and Rusty is torquing away and hopefully it'll make a beep noise. Come on, Rusty. Oh, come on. There we go. 90 degrees on these bolts is actually quite a bit. This, this flex plate is going nowhere. And it is a flex plate, people. I say that all the time with automatics and people are like, it's a flywheel. I'm like, no, 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 that's for a manual, a flywheel. Flex plate is the proper term for automatics. You know how much I love my proper terms. I'm just kidding, most everybody says flywheel. It doesn't really matter. If you try to look up the torque specs on Google and you type in flex plate, there are literally no threads on any of that. It, everybody uses flywheel. And then again, I say motor all the time. It's really not a motor. It's not an electric motor. It's an engine. Who really cares, right? Who really cares? I care. First things first for the head bolt and tap it job is we have to set the crank to 40 degrees before top dead center. And that is basically a safety position. That'll make sure that there are no pistons that are all the way up so that when we remove the camshafts, none of the valves accidentally kiss the pistons. So right now we're just going to go ahead and turn the crank. And this one turns, that's, that's kind of nice. So you can see this line right here on the front timing cover. It matches right there where it says 40. Next up, we're gonna remove the intake manifold. Okay, one of the bolt heads is broken. Excellent. Okay, there we go. Easy peasy. Here's the broken intake bolt. So these are one-time use bolts. So someone most likely resealed the intake. These engines also had intake sealing issues and they probably reused the bolt. So we'll have to get this guy out of there. Shouldn't be a big deal. Um, but right now I wanna take a look at what we have here for valves. I want to make sure that 
valves, well at this point I'd just be happy if the valves exist in the engine. Because if you saw the last video, we, we had one that was missing. But right now, we are looking excellent. It's got, it's got all of its valves. All right, so I'm popping out the coils right now. We're gonna pull these spark plugs. All right, let's get some spark plugs out. Crack these loose by hand, of course. Not taking a ton of effort here. One out of eight down. And then, and good. Let me show you. Driver side bank spark plugs looking excellent. Look at these things. Nothing's damaged. They look pretty clean, not fouled out. I'm liking it. And they are Mercedes plugs. I have all these free. Let's take a look. Radical. Bodacious? Does anyone actually say that? Take a look at my totally tubular passenger side bank spark plugs. Oh yeah. All right, so we're gonna remove this valve cover next. So let's get this engine harness out of the way. This harness is actually junk. We're gonna be swapping the one over from the C63 that we took off in the last video. All right, people say a little prayer for the cams. The camshafts were another common failure point. Typically because the tappets would fail and beat up the cams. But either way, the cams could be in rough shape and they are very, very expensive to replace. Not to mention that we're not gonna get them in the next day and we are on a crazy time crunch for me to drive this car back home. I got a one-way ticket out here, people. That's how confident I am that we'll be okay. I've been burned before though. I mean, originally I was supposed to just pop a fuel injector in this car and drive it home. That, that did not work. But that is all behind us now. We're gonna be okay. Well, if, if I would get this last bolt out. There we go. Oh, ho, ho. what do we got? What do we got? Wow, these cams look awesome. All right, take a look at these beautiful cam lobes. I mean, if anyone is looking for a screensaver or even like a poster in their bedrooms, I know you might have like a Lamborghini up there or maybe a supermodel, but how about, how about you just screenshot these cam lobes right here, put it up on the wall, and just stare at these bad boys before you go to bed at night. Or you could just feel the spirit of wild nature playing Hunting Clash, the most realistic mobile hunting game you've ever seen. Hunting Clash brings one of humanity's most ancient traditions to life, taking you around the world to hunt dozens of different wild animals. Look at this beautiful landscape. I gotta find me something to hunt. Oh, here we go, it's over here. There we go, bam, precision. 93, yes! Oh yeah, look at that. Flame, cha-ching! Upgrade your weapons and compete with other hunters all while you polish your skills in preparation to hunt the most dangerous critters on Earth. Test your skills as a ghost hunter and rid the planet of goblins while playing in the special Halloween location added for the Halloween event and try out this bad boy, the special bone collector rifle. Hunting Clash is available to download for free on iOS and Android using the QR code on screen or by clicking the link in the description box. Use coupon code LEGITSTREETCARS to get a special welcome bonus loaded with lure cards to help you improve your skills and hunt bigger and badder animals. And if you guys want to play against one of the best hunters in the game, then search for Legit Hunt. That guy is straight killer. Big thanks to Hunting Clash for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to scoping out more of my new engine. These are some sweet cam lobes. Everything is looking good. It looks like they kept up on their oil changes. And if we look in here, we can see this does still have the original head bolts. So if you look up major issues with the M156 engine, you'll probably find my video from about three or four years ago highlighting five of these. But the most common you'll read about anywhere would be head bolt failure. So from 2007 to sometime in 2011, Mercedes ran this style head bolt on the M156 and later upgraded to this style head bolt. And the issue was strength. So the head of the bolt would literally just snap clean off and what would happen is the head gasket wouldn't seal, it would start eating coolant. You'd notice a low coolant light on or eventually your engine overheating. And it was all about the structure of this bolt. So you can see on the older style bolt, there's just less material at the very top 
and they beefed up the new style bolt, so this really was not an issue. I'll leave a Mercedes document down below to tell by the engine serial number on your car if you have the newer head bolts, because not all model year 2011 engines had these. There was a break-off point, so you just want to make sure, especially before you buy one of these cars. So a couple of different options here. If you're going to go crazy with your M156 and boost it like this one, you're going to want to go with these VRP head studs. These are very, very strong head studs for the M156 engine. This is pretty much the end all be all to any of your head sealing issues. But if you're not going forced induction and you just want more of a factory upgrade, these are the factory upgraded head bolts and FCP Euro sells an excellent kit to replace all of the head bolts and your tappets as well. I'll leave those linked down below, but they include all the little gaskets and every single part you need. So you don't have to go scour the internet for part numbers and try and figure that all out on your own. They give it all to you laid out nice and organized at very, very good prices. Uh, and you can get the standard tappets, which are a lot less expensive than the Black Series ones. But if you want some added durability, the Black Series tappets are coated with an anti-friction material. So these are gonna last longer and free up a little tiny bit of horsepower. Uh, these are the factory ones. Nothing really wrong with these. If you wanna save some money, you can definitely go ahead and replace your tappets with these. You definitely wanna do these though while you're in there and while you're doing the head bolts. So I've already sprayed down the nuts for the exhaust manifold, so let's remove these guys. And sometimes you're gonna get a stud to come along with it, no big deal. Hey, look at that, this time we got a nut. All right, last one. And most of the nuts came off. We did take out a few studs with them, but if you guys were around for the C63 header install video I made like three years ago on my white C63, where we did the header job with the engine in the car, nightmare. There were a couple of studs that were already broken off by somebody else and we had to drill and they crammed this gigantic dual overhead cam engine into a very small C-class so there was like no room. That was wild. Lots of off camera swearing went on in that video. I try to keep it clean though for what makes it in. All right, let's take a look at our cams on this side. Last valve cover bolt. Hail to these excellent condition cams. I gotta say, the bar gets set kind of low when you're working on some of these higher end Euro cars that have a ton of issues typically. Like if this was a 50,000 mile Honda engine, I'd be like, yeah, that's great, that's normal. With this kind of complicated stuff, you see this and you're like, yes, yes. So we have another pair of sweet looking cams. And one question I get a lot is, Alex, can you just do the head bolts one by one? Meaning you just take one out, put the new one in, torque it, and then move on to the next. And I have heard of people doing that. They posted that up on the forums, but those guys never really post up again. So you never really know how long it lasted. I personally would not want to do that. I understand the appeal though. It's much easier than removing everything and taking the heads off and cleaning and all that kind of good stuff. Um, but God forbid you compromise the seal of the head gasket while doing that. You're just going to run into issues later that could cost you a lot more. And we're giving the C63 away as a reliable car. So I wanna do everything tip top on this. And if you haven't entered the giveaway, it's totally free to do so. I've partnered up with modsandmiles.com to give this thing away. All you have to do is sign up and share some listings on social media, and that gets you hundreds of entries to win. It's the freest and easiest giveaway in the world. And just look at these cams, guys. You're gonna be winning these cams with the car. Can't beat that. Next up, we wanna remove the camshafts. So we have to begin with removing this plate that houses the cam solenoids and sensors. Okay, there we are. And they do have a seal right here, so you're gonna wanna replace that as well. Not super common, but these can develop flat spots, kinda like at the bottom here, and leak. Actually, this one was probably leaking. Yeah, you can tell from all the dirt that's collected right underneath that, that it was just seeping out a little bit. So we're gonna be correcting that, which is kinda nice. All right, so let's get the other side off. Just have to disconnect some of these connectors. And sometimes a little pick tool comes in handy here so you don't break any of this off. There's a ground on each side. Unlike the bad engine in the last video, we care about this one. So I'm putting bolts back, keeping everything organized. There we go. All right, so right now we are gonna be locking the camshafts in place. And so we have to install these bars at the back side of the cams. So you can see they fit inside of these little grooves. 
So you might have to move the crank just a tiny bit to get those to fit perfectly. So when you're done in the back, it looks like this and like this. So right now we're installing this holding tool right here on the cam gear. We just tighten this up, but this holds the adjuster gears. And you can see here, there are two gear sets, one in the back, one in the front. And this goes in between both of them so that they're held at the same time. So right now we're gonna be taking the camshaft adjusters off separately. Uh, because we want to take them apart, dissect them a little bit, make sure they're in good condition and replace parts if needed. Um, but if you didn't want to do that, if you just wanted to get the head off, you could take these off with the cans. They are on there. Luckily, we have Rusty's muscles here just ready, just ready to attack. Did you work out yet today, Rusty? I had a really good dinner. Yeah, okay. Sponsored by Alex. <laughs> That's right. I, I fed these boys steak last night, so we're, we're ready to work. Not just steak. Filet. Oh, filet. And you got the scallops? I did get scallops. Yep. You got that green spinach artichoke. You saved that. Did you eat that for breakfast? He's got his spinach in. <laughs> so that is one camshaft adjuster. So if you were just servicing the camshaft adjusters, it's not that huge of a job. You get the valve cover off. You get this front cover off. Um, you hold these gears together, the phaser gears or camshaft adjusters, same thing. And then after taking the bolt out, they just come right out. Then we'll just do the same thing on this side. All right, so we're taking off the passenger side bank intake actuator now. So this does have variable valve timing VTEC, if you will. I don't think Mercedes has a trademark term for variable valve timing, right? I don't, I don't know. Let me know down below. I mean, pretty much every modern engine has yeah. a form of variable valve timing, but they usually come up with fancy terms for it. I don't know what Mercedes is, but I'm going with super AMG power. At this point, you probably don't see anything else we really have to remove, right? wrong look at this thin little sneaky guy very easy to forget and this would be a very bad bad thing to forget it goes with the camshaft adjusters and it blocks these little holes that flow oil into the adjuster so you basically have a massive internal oil leak so it wouldn't be catastrophic or anything if you forgot that you just have to take everything back apart uh, technically the camshaft adjuster would not function without that but i don't think they've designed these to be so far out of whack if you forgot it that it would cause any piston to valve collision type of damage all right so while rusty's taking the last camshaft adjuster off we are going to remove this broken intake manifold bolt and it's a pretty neat tool but i'll take this out in short order so we're going to thread this guy on there and this has basically two nuts so we're going to hold this top one still and then turn the bottom one into it until it gets really tight. Then you just want these to line up like that. And then you're gonna put a socket over the both of them and then turn it out. Okay. <laughs> All right, not the best show right there for you. I thought that was gonna come right out, but it didn't. Next up, we're gonna remove the camshafts and we wanna work from the outside in. We're gonna start with this front larger cap and loosen everything up by hand. And we're just gonna go ahead and take off this front one completely to kick this party off. And just like you saw in the V12 engine series, there is a sequence to all of this that you wanna keep in mind as well. So with that out of the way, we're gonna to move to the back side. We'll just loosen these guys up and then we'll move to the frontmost bolts that are left and then back to the back. Loosen these guys and then these. Everything should be relaxed now. All right, so this cam can come off now. There we go. Just kind of hold your caps. We're gonna keep each camshaft in order with the caps where they were. Now let's take the intake cam off. On the last bolts, you're gonna get some pressure here. The valve spring's fighting you. And you might even hear a popping noise on the last one. And you're gonna be okay though. There we go. Intake is off. And you can see we're keeping these in order. So we have exhaust and intake with their matching camshaft on the passenger side. And let's take a look at these tappets. Some people call these lifters as well, but they're, they're definitely not like your traditional lifter. And they just come right out. And what you're looking for here is mostly the wear on the top. You'll see this kind of gouge in if the cam is in bad shape, but also on the sides, these things spin inside of their little bore and they should spin very easy. So you can just kind of go around and see if any are stuck. And I don't suspect we're gonna have any issues, but once they get stuck, that's usually when you start running into issues. And at that point, these tappets can destroy the cam. That's why you definitely wanna keep up on your oil changes. I was never a big fan of the 10,000 mile oil change on these Mercedes, maybe the non-AMG version, but when they came out with this engine, 
I think this really needed to have more frequent oil changes. Uh, I typically go about 5,000 miles on the M156. For the low cost of engine oil, why risk it? Overall, these look to be in excellent, excellent condition. Uh, let me pop off those cams and then we're taking heads off. All right, so we got intake cam number two coming off and these are numbered if you don't wanna drop them like I've done, taking them off with the cam. So you can see here, five, six, seven, eight. Be very careful with your cam too. These guys are so expensive and hard to get. Just wanna show you this again. When you get to the last cap, it is gonna fight you a little bit. So just do a little at a time, you'll be all right. See how it's popping up there? So let's take your time and make sure you grab onto this cam. For dear life, people, dear life. There you go. Okay, that cap is off. So we got these three journals to pop out. It's stuck here though. So we're putting some of these caps back on. And this is just something that happens when you're removing camshafts. Sometimes they get stuck. Sometimes they kind of pop out and it sounds bad, but it's not. Sometimes they get stuck and sometimes they do just come right out. So I just want to show you guys the real world of camshafts getting stuck in case you're going to be doing this at home. Uh, that's what we're running into right now. So we're putting some of the pressure back on these caps in the rear just to kind of alleviate the pressure in the front. It's kind of a little song and dance here. Oh, there we go. It popped. So don't go prying in here with anything. It's tempting to get a gigantic pry bar in here, but you don't want to scratch any of this stuff up. So just take your time. So these tappets, lifters, or even buckets, there's all sorts of terms for these. Uh, they're looking pretty similar to the ones on the other side. They are showing a little bit of wear when you see the discoloration in the middle. Um, but we can't feel anything. But again, there'd be no reason to reuse these. I would definitely swap them out because you don't want them to eventually turn into this. This is what happens when these things fail catastrophically. And that's not good. Next up, we're gonna be removing the belt tensioner. And we will be replacing this part. And we got that out of the way though to remove the oil filter housing, which very well could have been leaking a little bit. There's a gasket in here. There we go. Yeah, so I'm gonna venture to say that this was starting to seep out a little bit, that's why we have all of this oily dirt buildup. Uh, that or it could have been a combination of the seal leaking right in here as well. So we have a lot of little leaks that we're gonna be fixing while we're in there. So a nice little 50,000-ish mile freshen up on this engine. So again, all that happens is these seals kind of flatten out, they shrink, they get hard, and they crack, and they leak. And this is the timing chain tensioner bolt. So we're gonna take that all the way out now. It's gonna relieve the tension on the timing chain. There we are. And if you guys saw the last video, you know that pretty much everything on this engine is AMG specific. As you can see, AMG is written on here. It's an AMG specific belt tensioner, although I think the normal one would bolt right up, so I don't really know exactly what's going on here, but it does have a 156 part number. It could very well be just a way that they are able to charge more money for these parts, but you know, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and pretend that these are way better than the normal ones. So with the tensioner off, we can see we have slack here on the timing chain, but we need to take out a couple of pins for the guides here so that this drops down. So for that, we need a special tool that's gonna thread in right here. I had to make one of these for the V12 engine because I couldn't find the proper tool in time. But all this is is a little slide hammer. You can use a much larger one too, it requires a lot less effort, but this is what we got. As you can imagine, this is a pretty tight press fit. There we go. There's one. And we'll just thread the same tool in to the top one. Doesn't really matter which one you take out first. Come on, pin. Get out. Ah, got it. Definitely needed to eat my Wheaties this morning, that's for sure. Now we're gonna use a five mil to get this little bolt out here that holds our gear. There we go. And then this special tool here is gonna thread in like that. And we're gonna go at it with the slide hammer again. This one's not too hard though. There we go, okay. All right, so with that out, you see here the gear is totally loose and we can remove the head now. So this engine is really actually not all that difficult to work on because 
this timing chain is just going to stay right in place. We don't have to worry about it sliding off the crankshaft gear or anything like that. It actually has an idler in here. We can't see it right now. Uh, that's going to hold the chain up in the middle section, the middle upper section. So at this point, we can just start cracking head bolts loose and this will just stay right here. All right, so we're going to start off with the smaller T45 bolts for the head. We're going to want to go ahead and pull these guys out. There we go. All right, then we're going to go outside in reverse torque on the head bolts. So there's a reverse torque sequence and a torque sequence, especially for aluminum heads because you can warp them if you don't torque them in the proper sequence. So we're just going to go around. Taking this bracket off helps. Look, even this bracket says AMG. So you can do the head bolt job with the engine in the car, of course. You're working on pretty much everything from the top. You don't even have to get to the main timing cover. So it's not that bad of a job, really. I think this pays about 14 hours, 15 hours, something like that, book time to R&R the heads with the engine still in the car. Okay. That's our last one. With all these cracked loose, we can go nuts with the electric impact. All right, so let's go ahead and remove these head bolts now. A magnet works well for this or some needle nose pliers. As you can see, none of these have failed. And I don't know if this was really related to mileage. Um, when I was at the dealership, we were replacing these under warranty sometimes at 10,000 miles. Um, so these are hand built. It could have been something to do with little tolerances on torquing them and whatnot, but they are inherently weak bolts. So that was the main issue. Um, but I did see these sometimes at 100,000 miles with no issues, sometimes at 15,000 miles uh, with the head snapped clean off. So not really a rhyme or reason that I can tell, but they're bad. All right, time to remove this cylinder head. And we'll take a look at the condition of the pistons and the bass cylinder wall. I don't know German at all. I always say things improperly, so I'm just owning it, all right? It's funny, when I first started working for Mercedes at the dealer in 2003, a lot of our work instructions were only in German. That was, uh, that was difficult. There we go. It's stuck on the gasket a little. There we go. Hey, we have pistons. Yay, we have all of them. Watch, I drop this head now. Get out of here, head gasket. There we go. Yeah, this is pretty crusty, I'm not gonna lie, but this is just how they are. These things always had a little bit of carbon buildup issues. All right, we're putting this on the surgical cart. Looking at this on the bench, these look pretty normal, but this does not look normal at all. This is rusted. Oh, no, 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 no. Do not do this to me. What is going on here? Look at this. That is rust. That's a rust buildup that my nail is getting stuck on right now. You gotta be kidding me. No, what is going on here? Oh no. You don't wanna feel anything really. Nothing should be getting caught when you're running your finger or nail up and down a cylinder. That is missing material. I think water got in this guy and rusted up the steel ring. It might have expanded. And this is rust material, I think, from the ring. I think right here, the ring must have frozen itself to the cylinder and then ripped this part out. Oh, geez. Let me get the other head off real quick. All right, I've already removed all the head bolts and everything on this side. Let's see what we got. We got stuck gaskets again. Oh, this side is beautiful. Wait, stuck over here. Help me out, Rusty. All right. Yeah, this side is great. Yeah, this is definitely more normal. You know, these engines do have a little bit of a carbon buildup issue for a port injected engine, uh, especially some of these really low mileage ones. This is like a 13 year old car uh, that only had 57,000 miles on it. Um, so probably a lot of putzing around. Um, but yeah, this is, this is what I wanted to see, uh, you know, for the entire engine. You know, this is beautiful. No buildup at all. Everything is smooth all the way around. Um, I'd have to turn the engine down to go down there and take a better look at this, but I'm gonna venture to say that is fine. I mean, all these, these look great. There is no evidence of any water intrusion. And here's that side cylinder head. As you can tell, no rust or anything. This looks pretty good. It would just need a cleanup 
and we'd be fine. But what in the world? Look at, I don't even know if those can physically open anymore. They've basically rust themselves shut in there. What is going on? This one, oh yeah, this one's open. This one is stuck open slightly. Look at that. So with the camshaft removed, all of these should be completely closed. There's nothing holding these valves open. And that one is open. I wonder if it got a chunk of rust in there and now it's stuck. Oh man, this is not good. So as soon as I found this, I got a hold of the guys at GM Outlet. They are the ones that found this engine for me. Uh, it was out of a wrecked 2010 E63 and they are on the case right now. So I don't know exactly what's gonna happen. I paid 7,500 bucks for the engine. Uh, it does come with a 90 day warranty, which I believe I'm still in. I think it's only been about 60 days, so it should be covered. But he had mentioned that this engine recycling outfit that he got this engine from, uh, they work on some kind of like extended warranty basis or something. So like if an engine has an issue in those 90 days, you have to file a claim with some kind of extended warranty or I, I honestly, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, I trust the guys at GM Outlet. That's who I paid for the engine, but they mostly do LS swap stuff. So this isn't out of a car that they physically bought. They were kind of the broker in this deal. So I don't know how this is all gonna end up. Um, I'll definitely let you guys know in part three because this is a three-part series. This is part two and I'm going to make a third video out here in West Virginia and possibly a fourth because now I have to figure out a way to get home. I don't have a car to drive, but I did buy another car, a really cool LS car that's here and I haven't started it or really gotten into it at all. So we're going to see if it's in good enough condition to make it home to Chicago. But anyway, I'll let you guys know in part three. Uh, what we're doing with the C63 engine, if we can come up with a solution for this, because I still have a few more days out here in West Virginia. Honestly, I just, I don't know. I don't know, but I will fill you in at the very beginning of that video. And in the meantime, I am going to help the guys here at Modern Masters and VRP work on this. We are gonna get the largest supercharger ever put on a naturally aspirated M156 equipped E63 running and driving. This is a brand new supercharger that Phil has been putting together and building for the last three years and it's almost done. So I'm gonna help the guys out with this. So in the next video, you're gonna see kind of the conclusion of what's going on here. You're gonna see some E63 action. Oh, and I will have to extend the giveaway uh, it took me about a month and a half to find this low mileage engine on the C63, and I don't want to cut corners. I could easily go find a 130,000 mile engine for like four grand and plop it in and just, you know, cross my fingers, but I don't want to do that. Whoever wins this car, I want to be giving away a really nice and reliable car. That's why I was doing all of the upgrades, the Black Series tappets, the updated head bolts, the headers. I'm still going to do all of that. Uh, we just have to wait a little bit, so I'm going to extend this giveaway out potentially about 30 days or so, just to give me time to find the right engine and finish everything up on the car. But anyway, stay tuned for the next video. There'll be a ton of questions answered in that video and a ton of fun with a supercharged E63 and then maybe me making it back home to Chicago. Maybe, I don't know. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed this madness, give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, subscribe if you haven't already, and most importantly, have a much better day than I just had. Also, don't forget to go hunting with Hunting Clash. Link is in the description box, and I'll see all of you in the next video.